is the Iowa Hawkeyes, well represented here. Michael Ojemudia, defensive back. Torn Young, Nate Stanley from the offensive side, representing Iowa as the Hawkeyes look to get themselves back on top. The Big Ten West, a very balanced division where I think a lot of teams come into Chicago thinking they have a chance eventually to emerge as the champ this year. Michael, I, I will start with you. What will it take for Iowa to be the team that ends up winning the West this year? Yeah, before we win any games, we're going to have to prepare. So since January, down and out, and into summer camp, uh, we're going to have to win games in the off season. So just preparing, getting better every day. And then when it comes to the season, not looking any over, looking not looking not overlooking any opponent is how we're going to win the West. Torn. Yeah, uh, we talk about at Iowa uh, the battle being won before it's fought. So we talk about focusing on the details. You talk about the long off season, you know, from January leading up to August. Uh, you know, just focusing on the uh, the little things, the small details, uh, having a good uh, lift and conditioning session, um, building our culture, and talking about doing the little things like that. How do you become that team, Nate? Uh, echoing what these two guys said, you know, we prepare um, to win before we play the game. So just having that preparation, whether it be physically or mentally, uh, just making sure that we're ready to play and not overlooking any opponents. Interesting in, in talking to Coach Ferentz, and we were outlining kind of the, the really good seasons for Iowa are the years that they figure out a way to win those close games. Iowa seems to be year in and year out in a lot of close games. Maybe it's style of play is part of that. So as you look back on last year and some of those really narrow defeats, are there a couple things you can put a finger on where you say, yeah, I mean, every game's its own unique beast, but if we were to do these two or three things more consistently, we'd win those games? Yeah, I think starting out a couple of those games, uh, you know, the turnover battle, uh, I think we probably lost lost that in a couple of those games, but then two, maybe just converting, converting one or two more third downs, uh, you know, extend a drive keep our defense off the field, give them a break. Uh, you know, who knows if we do one of those two things, uh, maybe there's a different outcome. Anything stand out to you as you watch Film Torn? Um, I just look at us finish, doing a better job of finishing and executing. Uh, like Nate said, it comes down to taking care of the ball and then uh, eliminating penalties. Michael? Yeah, something that uh, our defensive back coach, uh, our defensive coordinator, Coach Parker, says that the game is won and, like, three, four plays a game. So looking back at the film, you know, if we can just uh, execute better on a couple plays a game, it starts with doing that in practice, being perfect in practice, so that the mentality goes in the game and we don't miss any plays. Had the pleasure to visit with Coach Ferentz, as we said earlier, now 21 seasons at, at Iowa. You guys are a part of what has become kind of a well-oiled machine there. Michael, what do you think makes him such a good fit for the Hawkeyes? Yeah. He's a consistent man. What he tells you is what he's going to do. And um, just the way we practice and uh, the way we go about our business, um, Kurt, uh, Coach Ferentz is, like, the best man for that job because he's such a good man in and out. Torn? Uh, you just, when you talk about Coach Ferentz, you're talking about someone who cares about you on and off the field. Um, the emphasis that he puts on development in this program is huge. Um, you know, uh, we go after guys who... Uh, who have who have potential and the coaches help us reach that potential. Nate, yeah, uh, again, I think they hit it right on the head. You know, just the type of guy he is. Uh, you know, the attitude that he has towards every single day, and just the type of person he is really fits. Uh, you know, the blue collar, you know, work ethic uh, of Iowa. You guys are all uh, getting some individual accolades heading into this season. You in particular, Nate, are showing up on a lot of these NFL draft boards and people talking about you at that next level. What does it mean to, to see your name mentioned in that way? It's definitely special to uh, you know see that there might be a possibility past college for football for me. Um, but, you know, there's a lot more that goes into that than just, just uh, my play. Uh, my teammates help me out a lot. You know, the offensive line, the receivers, they, they do a lot of the work for me. So... Uh, you know, they help me out and, uh, you know, make me look good a lot of times. Along those lines, you're at the Manning Passing Academy. I know this past summer, what did you take from that? I think the biggest thing that I took from that is just a lot of the drills that Peyton and Eli incorporate into their daily routine, um, you know, making them game light, game like, and just a lot of the things that they do on the field to, to help me, uh, you know, prepare better and, and take some of those away and apply it to, you know, practice. Torn, if we look at last year for Iowa, I would say an area where the Hawkeyes are typically really strong 
and, and maybe wasn't the greatest strength of this team last year was the position you play and, and the running game. So how does that running back spot become more productive on a consistent basis this year? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, we look at last season and there's a lot we could take away from it, a lot that we learned as a group. Um, and this offseason, we've put a big emphasis on uh, doing a better job of breaking down film and just seeing the whole uh, game from a different perspective. Um, you know, before we were kind of just, we were young, younger, you know, a young group. You know, it was our first time being together, a young coach. Uh, we're kind of just running sometimes. But now, you know, we're looking at breaking down, you know, and analyzing the defense. All right, we're looking at what front is the defensive line playing? Are they in over front, under front? Um, will our center be able to reach their shade? Different things like that. Uh, where the safeties are, where they're rotating, and it's helping uh, open it up. And, you know, that showed in the spring, and we're looking forward to fall camp and building off of that. You have the benefit of a fantastic offensive line, and, and Tristan Wirfs and Alaric Jackson in, in particular are getting a lot of hype heading into this year. Give us a sense of what makes those guys so good. Uh, definitely just their work ethic. You know, they're athletic and they're very talented, but they have this contagious work ethic. And all across the board, our offensive line, and they're working. Um, you know, we got some young guys that are going to step in, and, and, you know, Tristan and A.J. do a great job of leading those guys and just setting the tone. So, yeah. Michael, I know you're part of the leadership group. Give me a sense of how you lead. Um, this leadership role that I've gone into, it's kind of a newer role for me. Usually I would uh, just lead by example, but um, trying to be a more vocal leader and um, just show uh, the younger dudes how to show up, do the right thing, do the little things right. It's kind of the leadership approach I'm trying to take. So just by my example and um, the way I conduct my business, that's how I'm trying to be a leader to the dudes younger than me. On your side of the ball, AJ Epinesa gets so much attention. What makes him so good? Yeah, AJ is a beast, and um, he makes our job easier as defensive backs. You know, with him on your side, you know the ball is coming out quick. If we do our job, uh, then it's easier for him to get sacks. So um, just playing alongside of him and collectively as a defense, um, having him is a blessing. You know, and um, just his worth ethic and um, the way he goes out about his business. He's a great guy to have on our team. Uh, going into last year at this point, a lot of the hype around the Hawkeyes was at the tight end spot, and justifiably so. It turned out you had two NFL draft picks at tight end. We were talking about this with Coach Ferentz before. It literally has never happened in the history of the NFL draft. Two first-round picks from the same school at the tight end spot. But it does deplete your <laughs> your uh, core of receivers a little bit, or, or pass catchers anyway. Who can step up and, and become kind of your go-to guys this year? Yeah, um, obviously it's hard to replace those guys, and you really can't just because of how special they were. But, uh, you know, I think they overshadowed a lot of guys just because of how good they were. And there's a lot of younger guys in that or, uh, tight end room and receiver rooms that, that uh, have a lot of potential and have the ability to, to catch a lot of passes this year. Who in particular? Uh, Nate Weeding, Sean Byer, Drew Cook. Those guys, they all worked extremely hard, um, you know, at that tight end position. And then also guys like... Nico Regani and Tyrone Tracy, they, they um, you know, were behind Nick Easley last year and had, did a really good job during the spring. All right, fellas, looking forward to seeing the Hawkeyes this year. Thanks so much for stopping by.